Let's talk about unprofessional traits we sometimes have on social media and how it could affect future employment. Did you know 85% of prospective employers are influenced by what you have put out on your social media feed? So be careful. Dr. Karen Sutherland from the Uni of the Sunshine Coast joins us right now. And the big question for you is, where are you? I'm home. <laughs> you're home now. Oh, there you go. Well, that's not very exciting. Usually you're in some crazy place, but excellent. Home. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, let's talk about the, uh, I guess, pitfalls of social media in terms of trying to get yourself a job. You've seen a little bit of research about this yourself um, at your university. Talk to us uh, just broadly about how your social media feed, it can be any of your future employers, uh, I guess, business, but it really is becoming something that everyone's looking at to get a handle on, on, on who they're about to hire. Absolutely. And so uh, we, I did a study with some colleagues at the University of the Sunshine Coast and one from University of Louisville in Kentucky. And we looked mainly at Australian employers and we surveyed them about what they thought were the most unprofessional social media behaviours. Um, and this isn't just for job seekers, this is for current employees as well. So be very careful and very mindful of your organisation's <laughs> social media policies. And so what we found is that uh, they, they, they look at your social media profile or they start searching for you as soon as they receive your application if you are yeah. going for a job. And, and I did that myself, to be completely honest. We were, yeah. uh, one of my colleagues and I here this morning uh, were talking about, you know, some new people who might be coming on board. And the first thing you do is you Google them. You have a look to see what you can find out about them. You have a look on LinkedIn. You might have a look on Instagram to see the sort of person they are. And I mean, you can tell so much about it. So how can you have a social media feed knowing that your boss might be kind of looking at you? Things can be very subjective. What is a photo on the beach having a great time in your bikini can become a job hazard if it might be a conservative organization, for example. How do you make sure that you can have a social media feed that isn't just your favorite cat or pot plant? Yeah, I mean, I guess it comes down to your privacy settings as well, because in, in a lot of research that I've looked at, um, a lot of people thought that their privacy settings were fine and they weren't, so everything was available. Um, and the main thing is, like, the, the most unprofessional social media behaviours we found in our studies were really sort of antisocial behaviours and really damaging and harmful behaviours. So um, bullying, um, you know, showing people taking drugs, you know, those sorts of illegal activities. So they just don't do that stuff, right? Um, but the, it also um, the other categories were things relating to current or previous employers. So um, these were highly sensitive topics as well. So things like, um, you know, bad mouthing a, a former um, employer or current, or current um, and even your colleagues, if they found things like that, that didn't work in their favor. Also um, posting photos or sharing confidential information about something to do with your, your employment on social media did not stand you in good stead either. So I mm. guess it's it's really common sense. I, although they say common sense isn't that common, <laughs> but it's more like you know you have to really put yourselves in the shoes of of a, an employer and and, yeah. and understand you know what would they like to see. There was a case I remember this sort of reminded me of a woman who went for a job um, and she didn't get the job, but then the company found some uh, one of her Instagram photos of her in a swimming pool in a, a in a swimsuit. Um, and then posted it without her, her face showing, saying, don't put this on your social media if you want a job. Now, I, I think that is a bit overboard. Yeah, um, it's a bit over the top. It wasn't Yeah, like absolutely, she, absolutely. Well, I, I think, though, that like there are, there are points to what you're saying from the employer's side that absolutely. can actually really help. I've kind of witnessed organisations that in a rush have hurried uh, and, and hired people, you know, because they really need to fill a spot without doing, I guess you could call it due diligence on the person that they're hiring later to find out that that person is a little bit crazy on social media, <laughs> has a lot of very, very out there viewpoints, which later came yeah. home to roost. Absolutely. And, and from an employer's perspective, remember your organization or business reputation is on the line, um, depending on you know who you hire. So you really need to be, you know, check thoroughly and make sure they're the right fit for your organization as well. Um, and the bullying the side is pretty player. interesting though, isn't it? Like it's um, one of those things that can be kind of hard to find if they are because quite often bullying isn't that they're doing, isn't necessarily, let's take Facebook for example, isn't on yeah. their page. It could be a no. comment that they've done on a post 
that you can't actually see, right? So how, yeah. what can an employer do about a situation like that? Or will that just not well, show Well, the thing up? is it won't come to light until someone shows it to them. So there's, there was a case um, a few years ago at, at Monash University where um, one of their employees was bullying, actually, um, I think it was actually Charlotte Dawson, uh, sadly, and yeah. um, on Twitter, and that person had their had posted their business card a few days earlier with their Monash thing on there. And so um, Charlotte um, sent that to the employer. So just remember, though, from the, the, the employee's perspective or job seekers, if once it's on the internet, anyone can take a screenshot and send it to anyone. So don't think your privacy settings are the you know the things that are going to save you. If someone wants to show someone something, they still can. We live in this incredible world, don't we, where um, people have never been able to have a voice like they can now. But a lot of people aren't prepared to have that voice. They think that pub chat or things that you might say in front of your mates to get them to laugh is the sort of thing that you can post online. I go through Facebook and it could be people I went to school with, etc. We all lead very different lives now. And you think, what on earth could you be possibly thinking to think that this is a good idea? Even family members who post things on Facebook, etc., that are hugely controversially political. And you look at it and you go, I never knew you were thinking that. And I've known you for 30 years. So it's kind of <laughs> really bizarre, yes. isn't it? How you it learn really so much about people it. through it. But at the same time, yeah. people just seem to be so willing to put themselves in this situation. It's just utterly bizarre. Yeah, I, I just think they don't have that sort of long-term thinking of the ramifications of their behaviour online because maybe it is new to them. Um, there was, I saw this morning on, on TikTok, um, <laughs> the, a, a video of a guy um, and he was from Apple and he, he it was a 45 second video just showing him saying, you know, I, I worked at Apple this long, I got like, this award, I got this and that. And then he said, and then after 14 years, I got a termination letter. And it was because he'd sworn on his social media posts and it um, contravened the Apple's social media policy and he yeah. was sacked. So, you wow. know, it, it's, organizations do follow through on this stuff. And so you've got to be, you've got to, if you're working somewhere, you really need to know what you're getting into as well yeah. and what the rules are around. We live in a far more HR world than we ever have before. And that is also because we live in so much of a more litigious world than we ever have before, where people, whether that be employees, former employees, some people look for any reason, any chance to be able to cause chaos in an organization. And so organizations have had to respond. So to us, it may seem a little bit over the top, but I suppose to them, they have to protect themselves. They have to be careful. They have to make sure that their IP is protected, for example, which for a lot of businesses is the thing that puts them above the rest. And, and that can be things that you even unintentionally do. I know a lot of television stations don't allow people to take photographs on the studio set, for example, because they're worried that that will be used by their competitors to match what they're doing or to find out their trade secrets. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's there are like, there, a lot of industries have really strict rules, but then again, again, on the flip side, there are still a lot of organizations and businesses who don't have any rules and yeah. um, they don't have a social media policy. And it's not until something happens that they realize that they should have had one. Um, so it's really important to actually sit down and, and work that out as a business. Uh, so what would you suggest then for, for a lot of businesses that perhaps hire um, a lot of casuals? It's obviously easier to maintain standards when you have full-time employees, particularly if you're a yeah. small or medium-sized business, you know them all, you can just have a quick word, look, that wasn't quite in keeping. Um, quite often it can be your business partners who post things that aren't in keeping with your brand that you have to remind them, hang on a sec, mm. like you're representing who we are, you've got our name under your name. Um, so what would you suggest are just a couple of really simple tips that employees can tell employers um, as a social media policy for what they can expect? Well, it's more, it's more about if you want to post whatever you want, do not associate yourself with our brand on social media. Um, I know at USC we have a policy, I mean we have lots of students and staff and it's more like um, you, you can do whatever you want but do not connect yourselves with, with us online. Um, that way no one knows that you know you're part of us. So and that, that's you know and if you are going to connect yourselves with us and here are the rules around that. So I think that's that's actually a good, a good one. Um, 
and it depends on each business exactly but it's it's more about you know just not bringing a, a business or, or brand into disrepute um not doing you know sharing illegal things not being highly you know political or or if you are established we have to do it as academics say these are my views you know these aren't the views of the university you need to um, establish that space between you as an individual um, and you as an employee so um, I, I'm a strong believer in having a, a policy, not too overbearing, but uh, even guidelines. Salvation Army has a great little video that they send out, which has, it's probably about two minutes and it has some great tips on what to do and what not to do. And, um, and they send that out to employees. So it's actually um, understandable in a really easy way. Asking someone to read a massive policy, it's not gonna happen. So you're not gonna get the information out to them. Also having regular training about about social media conduct as well is really important. So they're, awesome. they're my awesome. tips. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you again soon. Thank you. Thank and no you. more pop See bites and cats, I, and cats, I say. Yeah, well, that's right. That's right. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much. Dr. Karen Sutherland there from the University of the Sunshine Coast.